Jesus wept. What the fuck have I just witnessed? I mean, it's no secret that Batwoman's only real source of interest is to be an entertainment lol cow for reviewers like myself. Right from the start, it was always a ridiculous, ham-fisted attempt to craft a serious crime drama from some of the most unlikable, paper-thin characters played by some of the least talented actors on television. A show so relentlessly, comically woke that it was basically guaranteed to repel anyone who didn't dye their hair purple and weigh less than a metric ton. The show seemed to be on its deathbed after season one, with abysmal reviews, viewing figures that had fallen through the floor, and a star that had seen the way the winds were blowing and promptly abandoned ship. But damn if the CW didn't find a way to keep this Frankenstein's monster lurching onward just a little further. And the other day, I had the dubious pleasure of finally experiencing the first episode of Season 2. And since I covered the trailer, well, I guess I have some kind of professional obligation to give it a look. So let's get into this, shall we? The episode kicks off by introducing us to new girl Ryan Wilder, who's fast asleep in her camper van down by the river one night when pieces of a jet plane start falling out of the sky all around her. Why the fuck are you throwing up? Ah, maybe she read the script for this episode. So she's stumbling around through the wreckage, and what should she find? I guess Ruby Rose was on the plane when it crashed, but it does beg the question, where the fuck did she go? Did she, like, fall out of the Batsuit somehow? Anyway, whatever. She's officially listed as missing in action now, because I guess the writers are still convinced that Ruby Rose might come back someday. <laughs> <laughs> then Do Grey Scott shows up at the crash site looking for Kate, and honestly, I think a little piece of this man's soul must have died with every passing episode. Seriously, if this show isn't even good enough for Ruby Rose, what the fuck are you doing here, mates? But cometh the hour, cometh the man, and in Gotham's hour of greatest need, Bruce Wayne miraculously returns from the dead to take up the mantle of Batman once again. No way! Yeah, right. As if Warner Brothers would trust these morons with such an important character. What we actually get is some asshole wearing Bruce Wayne's face, so he can infiltrate Wayne Enterprises and take over the company. I love how nobody questions how or why he returned after vanishing for like five years, and they just immediately give him full access to everything. Even discount Morgan Freeman doesn't think it's weird that he now acts like a completely different person, and apparently doesn't know his way around his own office. But he doesn't give a shit. He wants to be the real Bruce Wayne now, but to do that, he needs to get his hands on the bat suits. Wait a minute, you can't just steal the bat suit and pretend to be Batman. Oh wait, I guess you can. Fuck knows what he'd actually do with it anyway, considering it's now been drastically altered. Sorry, I mean made perfect, in order to fit Ruby Rose's, uh, less extreme physique. Why do you even need that suit anyway? Like, with all the resources and technical expertise at Wayne Enterprises, can't you just manufacture another one? The Batsuit itself was never particularly special in the comics, and Bruce usually had multiple backups in case one got damaged. But nah, now it's like the fucking Excalibur of this show, I guess. Then discount Morgan Freeman gives him a chunk of kryptonite, which is apparently the only thing that can penetrate the Batsuit. What the fuck is this thing made from? Superman? Anyway, keep that kryptonite in mind because it'll be important later. So then it's back to Ryan, who's apparently a criminal on probation, and she's angry with her probation officer because it's hard to find a job when you've got a criminal record. No shit, lady! That's why you're not supposed to break the law in the first place. Also, if an oppressed protagonist, abandoned by society, appealing for help to a disinterested bureaucrat looks strangely familiar, that's probably because you saw it in another DC movie a while back. All I have are negative thoughts. I know they say that if you're gonna steal, then steal from the best, but damn! The idea of Batwoman actually putting itself on the same playing field as the Joker just... <laughs> warms my heart. God bless you, CW. Never change. Anyway, I think you get the point here. Ryan is a down and out, and she ticks basically every oppression box possible, but now that she has the Batsuit, that can only mean one thing. Time to be powerful. <laughs> Fuck's sake, man. I honestly hoped that that was just a line for the trailer. But nope, there it is, loud and proud for all to see. 
I love how the writers of this show have literally never heard of the concept of irony. So now that she's suited up, it's time for diverse Batwomen to kick some criminal arse. Cue another clumsy fight scene with the world's most accommodating stuntmen. Cue more cringe-inducing one-liners. And cue disgusting soundtrack that absolutely doesn't match with what's happening. Perfect work as always, CW. We also find out that diverse Batwoman's mum got murdered by Alice's gang back when she was younger. Wow, what are the odds that this random stranger would have such a personal connection to the show's antagonist? <laughs> So discount Morgan Freeman tracks her down to get the suit back, but she's like, nah, it'll be fine. Then she gives him a lecture about how oppressed she is, and how she deserves the suit, because her life has been hard. Fucking hell, the show is literally giving us a lecture about social justice. <laughs> how is this show even real? If he really wants the suit back, why can't he just shut it down remotely, or tell it to self-destruct or something? I, uh, I think I can smell shite. Then finally, someone figures out that fake Bruce is fake by tripping him up with something that the real Bruce should have known. It's a shame that discount Morgan Freeman never thought about that before giving him access to the Batcave. <coughs> anyway, fake Bruce has had enough of this shit, so he randomly blows holes in the Batcave until he finds a tunnel leading to what I guess is meant to be the Batmobile. <laughs> yep, that's it. That's the Batmobile now. Jesus, I can't wait to see the fucking Batwing. Also, I have to question what the point is in having a hidden tunnel inside the Batcave, which itself is already hidden. That's like keeping a safe inside a safe. So fake Bruce goes after diverse Batwoman with the shitmobile, and despite having the most advanced attack vehicle on the face of the earth, he somehow loses a fucking minivan. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter, because he tracks her down anyway and blasts her in the chest with a kryptonite shotgun round. Damn, there's no way you could survive that! Oh, never mind. How exactly did she survive a direct hit from the only thing powerful enough to penetrate the suit? Why didn't fake Bruce just shoot her in the face? Why would Bruce Wayne have a shotgun in the shipmobile anyway? Don't know. Anyway, then fake Bruce breaks diverse Batwoman's favourite plant pot, so she gets really mad and punches his fucking face clean off. Yes, Queen Slay! Then she walks straight into Wayne Tower, because I guess security isn't a thing in this show, and she hands back the suit to discount Morgan Freeman. Then everyone has a good old cry, because it's been at least 10 minutes since water leaked out of someone's face. Alice cuddles up to a dead guy, and it looks like the kryptonite from the shotgun round is leaking into diverse Batwoman's body. Oh no, I guess that means she's gonna have to get involved in things again. And that's it, that's the not-so-triumphant return of Batwoman. Honestly, trying to review this show is like trying to critique a three-year-old's finger painting. I guess you're supposed to be happy that they managed to produce anything at all. Everything that was bad about season one is even worse here. The ridiculous contrived plot, where supposedly intelligent people miss the most dead obvious clues because the story needs them to be stupid. The clumsy fight scenes that make Mortal Kombat Annihilation look like the raid. The goofy special effects, cheap costumes, and flimsy uninspired sets. The Batmobile that's literally just a low-end sports car spray-painted black. The ham-fisted attempts to give diverse Batwoman a meaningful reason for being involved in this shit. Not to mention some pretty sketchy morality, like how diverse Batwoman thinks she's entitled to steal the Batsuit because she had a difficult upbringing. Or how she irrationally hates Kate for being born into a rich family until she finds out that she's gay, which apparently makes everything fine then, because I guess your sexuality determines whether or not you're a good person. The thing that's simultaneously tragic and hilarious is just how serious the show manages to take itself despite its endless failures and shortcomings. The actors are genuinely going for it here, doing their best to bring pathos and drama into the most ludicrous of situations. And they all have this kind of bleak, haunted look in their eyes, like they can't quite believe the show is even still on the air. Well, apart from Alice, who I guess realised early on what kind of shit she'd signed up for, and vowed to bring that across in her performance. If I had to say something positive about this show, I guess Javicia Leslie is a marginal step up from Ruby Rose in that she actually has a personality. She's not afraid to have a bit of fun with the role and give her character some quirks and lighter moments. Of course, she still has to deliver obnoxiously preachy lectures, but I guess that's par for the course in shows like this. 
If nothing else, I have to commend the CW on their sheer self-delusion, sorry, I mean determination, plodding relentlessly forward with a flatlining show that has no justifiable reason to stay on the air. Ignoring the barrage of criticism and outright mockery from every corner of the internet, and even refusing to kill off its previous main character in the hopes that she might come back someday. <laughs> I mean, you have to admire their optimism, I guess. The fact that Batwoman got two whole seasons more than it deserved proves that you really can succeed even with basically every aspect of your production working against you. And if nothing else, well, it's certainly been entertaining. Maybe not in the way the CW intended, but entertaining all the same. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now. <laughs>